Welcome to this El Nino briefing. This is Alex Tardy, a meteorologist here at National Weather Service San Diego. This video will cover the expectations for the upcoming El Nino 2015 and 16. First, let's take a look at how the past years have been treating us here in California. There's been a lot of talk about the drought and temperatures over California over the past 48 months have never been this warm. As you can see here, all the way through May, when you add up the past 48 months, temperatures across the state warmest on record. You can say the same thing for the precipitation, which is more typically associated with drought. These deficits are significant, about 26 inches all the way through April of 2015, which is generally the end of the rainy season. This period is comparable to the late 80s to around 90, where we also had significant drought impacting our region. Here are some of the deficits since January 2011. You can see in San Diego, we're about 86% of where we should have been, but in Orange County, Riverside County, about a half as much rainfall as should have occurred. And that's just 2014-15. Now, when you look at the four-year deficit, this is what we need to make up. This is almost 40 inches of rain in the mountains and 15 inches of rain here in San Diego. So that adds up to about one to two seasons of precipitation that's been lost in the past four years. Okay, let's get on to El Nino. And El Nino is not apples and apples. We've seen many El Ninos that look different in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, as shown here, the sea surface temperatures. And we've also seen El Ninos that have resulted in different types of precipitation across California. So let's investigate some of this. Here's a historical look at the El Ninos. And you can see in red, not all of the El Ninos we've had have resulted in wet conditions or above normal precipitation in California. In blue is the La Nina year, so the opposite, the cool water in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Most recently, El Ninos have been rather dry across our region, like 2006-07, and you have to go back to 97-98, where you see the most significant wet El Nino. When we take a look at all the El Ninos together, that's on the left-hand side, you can see a pretty significant signal across the lower 48 states, especially Southern California with wetter than normal showing up. Mixed signal across Northern California, and then it drops off to dry in the Pacific Northwest. And take a look on the right. When you take away those three big El Nino years that really delivered significant precipitation, especially 82 to 83, 97, 98, you can see the dryness increases quickly and more widespread across Northern California. The main wet signal stays in Southern California. This is important to keep in mind when you consider the factor of El Nino and what it might do or not do to the drought across our region. All right, how about recent El Ninos? 2009-2010, well, basically across the West, it resulted in average precipitation, even though it was, for a short period, a strong El Nino. The immediate coast of California, including San Diego, had the main impact. Now, looking at La Nina of 2010 and 11, that had a big impact across the West. So this is why we cannot label El Nino as a guarantee or that El Nino equals above normal rainfall in California. When we look at all the numbers, we can see that the above normal years in California tended to be with the El Nino as shown in the yellow shade. And the biggest El Ninos shown here that exceeded 2.0 did result in above normal precipitation, though note that 72-73 was just about average, as well as the El Nino of 2002-2003 average precipitation here in San Diego, and most recently 09 to 2010, again average precipitation. 
But as a whole, El Nino tends to have a significant impact on precipitation, especially here in Southern California, but it's not a guarantee. What's our current El Nino doing? Well, we can see here that El Nino has continued to expand and increase in magnitude across the equatorial Pacific Ocean as shown here. There's also a separate region of warm water that has been influencing the Baja and even at times the California Bight with above normal temperatures as shown here in the large arrow. The area we need to focus on though for changing our jet stream in the winter is the El Nino zone from the Dateline across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. That area currently is showing some significant warming. We also need to look below the ocean surface and we see a reservoir of warm water most recently here in that El Nino zone. And what that tells us is that the El Nino could sustain itself for the next several months. You can see the trend has been since May that warm water coming up to the surface. Here's what it currently looks like. And if we focus on the Nino 3 or 3.4 region, we can see that there's an area of very warm water. When you start talking about El Nino strength of 1.5 or higher degrees Celsius, it's quite significant. You can see last year, 2014, we were waffling around with a weak El Nino and never really strengthened that much, but stayed in a weak El Nino state. And most recently, now on the far right, you can see it ramping up significantly. All regions across the equatorial ocean. Here's our computer model forecast, the latest prediction for July. And the yellow line is probably what we should be focusing on the most. There is quite a bit of spread in all the computer models, which is typical. But the yellow line gives us the most confidence. And that yellow line is showing that we are likely to stay in a strong phase as we enter in the fall and continue through the winter. And a strong El Nino, as we showed earlier, has the best correlation, not a guarantee, but the best correlation to above normal precipitation, at least for us here in Southern California. Here's the official forecast now for the winter outlook 2015 to 16. You can see the dark shaded green area painted across Southern California. So basically imagine an increased and more active, persistent jet stream coming off the Pacific, going across Southern California and across Texas and into Florida, as we showed in the earlier slides. That's why that area has the most confidence of being wetter than normal. Here's a zoomed up version for Southern California. You can see the most confidence is far Southern California. Then it gradually decreases and there's really no confidence for above normal precipitation in Northern California for the reasons we showed in the earlier slides. And for temperatures, we expect above normal temperatures in the area that will be rather dry, that's the Pacific Northwest, and not much indication for Southern California, and then cool with the rain and cloud cover across Texas. Here's a quick summary of takeaways for you. So El Nino is present and strengthening in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. There's a good chance to see a strong El Nino in fall 2015 as we enter the winter. El Nino at the strong phase, it does correlate to above normal precipitation, but only for Southern California. And it doesn't necessarily correlate well with the whole state. El Nino can impact the jet stream to bring more frequent storms during the wet season or the winter, but not necessarily stronger storms. El Nino does not guarantee above normal precip across the state. Very important to note, there has been historically several dry years with El Nino or average years like we showed earlier. And most recently, that was 2006, 2007, and then an average year of 2009 to 2010. The drought, the drought will continue since our four-year deficits are one to two seasons missed. So this is very critical to note. It's not going to take just a few storms. It's going to take much above normal precipitation across the entire state through the winter before we can start looking at the drought being removed. Thanks for watching this video presentation. Here are some resources for you to keep track of for the upcoming El Nino 
And if you want more information on the outlooks, there's a link below to the Climate Prediction Center is your best source. For real-time weather, tune into weather.gov San Diego or digitalweather.gov. If you'd like to monitor the weather, there's links including all weather stations, all weather stations on the middle link. Also follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more information. Thanks for tuning in.